You know, you all used to be that cute. <laughs> so if we could get those doors closed, I'd appreciate that. Our sermon today is representing Jesus, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. The Spirit of the Lord and just led me to go back to touch on just a phrase from our sermon last week. I went through it quickly, and I think we need to take time and draw in the full impact of this one phrase. So our text is verse 17 of 1 John chapter 4. From these verses, or for this verse, the believers and followers of Jesus Christ are in right standing with the Holy God. That is incredible. That's a phenomenal statement. That before a holy, just, pure God, if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you can stand before this sinless, perfect God and have no guilt, no worries, no condemnation, no judgment. Amazing. In our sermon today, I want you to understand that you represent Jesus Christ among and through and by all your acquaintances. So your presence should represent Jesus. That's what I want to get across from you in this simple little phrase. You are representative of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's read our text together. This is all of 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Let's read it in unison. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. Now, it's not part of my text, but I want you to understand that there is a day of judgment coming. We cannot underestimate that this already has occurred and is set in place for the future. God has determined judgment coming. We live in what's known as this time of grace. And we can accept and receive the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died and paid for our sins. And we have confidence. The word is boldness in the Greek. Boldness. I can be bold. Now, this week, I failed my Lord. Satan, in this spiritual warfare, knows where to come at you. He knows how to get you and to beset you and to get you down. It may be lust. It could be coveting. It could be discouragement could be distress, could be anything. He knows exactly how to undermine his children. You are in spiritual warfare. And you have to understand this. Every circumstance of your life involves spiritual warfare. You're in a battle, and you cannot d diminish or th think less of it. If you do, you're going to be suckered in, and you're going down. Because if Satan can't keep you out of hell, he's certainly going to do everything to keep you unhappy and unfulfilled and nervous in this world. Our portion today in verse 17 as our text is, As he is, so also are we in this world. The beginning of these verses states that his love is perfected in us. Back in the beginning of this chapter, we shared what this word means to become complete, to bring to completion or maturity. And God's love is perfected in us in six ways. Here are the six. As we love others, verse 12, 
by the Holy Spirit who lives in us, verse 12 and 13. Are his loves perfected in you through Jesus Christ, whom the disciples were eyewitnesses of him, and they share this with us, this truth. His loves perfected in us as we are conformed to him without any fear of the coming judgment. His love is perfected in you as you live for him in this world, our text today. And verse six, number six, we express no fear in displaying true love. Verse 18, our love comes across to other people without fear. Hebrews 1, 1 to 3 gives us an interesting dialogue. The writer of Hebrews says this, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. <coughs> so the writer of Hebrews is saying, We have the Old Testament, but now we have Jesus, the Son of God. Now notice what he says about it. Whom he, God, appointed the heir, Jesus, of all things. Through whom also he created the world. Jesus Christ was involved in the creation of the world. With God, with the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. He is the radiance, this is Jesus. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So we know this from just these verses. Jesus is God. He's eternally existent. He was part of creation. God sent his son here to earth. And those who followed him, disciples, learned of him, know everything about him, and he's the exact image of God the Father. He came, purification of sins is simply, he came and died on the cross of Calvary for your sins, to purify you, accept today, receive the gift of salvation, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And then he ascended back and is at the right hand of God the Father. He's seated there till he's coming again. But I want you to understand, Jesus, verse 3, is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. The exact icon is the Greek word. Character is the word that's there. His character comes from the exact imprint an image, an icon of God. You have an icon on your phones, your smartphones. Yours may be Starbucks, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What's that icon do? It's the exact image representation of that shop or store, Amazon, whatever it is. And you know when you touch on that icon, it's giving you what Amazon's all about. And you're going to spend your money. Jesus is the exact image, the exact imprint of God the Father. Now that's important for us today as we get across this thought in 1 John 4, 17. And it's this. As Jesus is the icon of God, the image, the imprint of God the Father, you, in your relationships, are the icon, the imprint, the image of Jesus Christ. That's right. If you know Him as your Savior, He chose you to be the icon. So when somebody touches your life, all that comes out of you should be about Jesus Christ. Wow. Let that sink in. That's what is being said in verse 17. We have, His love is perfected with us, so we have confidence in the day of judgment, 
because as he, as Jesus is, so also are you in this world. Friend, let me tell you, there's people you work with, there's people in your neighborhood, PT, never ever will ever meet. But you are the representation of Jesus Christ to God the Holy Father to those people. This is His plan. This is how God chose to get Jesus Christ across to millions of people who have lived since 33 A.D. He chose us, believers, disciples, to be the representation of our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How you doing at it? <laughs> Let me tell you, and I open my heart up to you, I probably do too often. <laughs> I didn't do well at it this week. I didn't. Because he, Satan knows where the battleground is. He knows where to get me. And so it is with you. So this word world there in our text is the Greek word cosmos. Its meaning in this verse and in most appearances of 1 John is to the inhabitants of the earth. It's not the actual sphere or globe, the existence of our planet. So here's what John's saying. I give you my paraphrase. As Jesus Christ is, so also are you in your many relationships. As Jesus Christ is, so also are you in all of your relationships. You represent Jesus. Does your family know him? Do they see him in you? Do your co-workers know him? Do they see you, him in you? Now the big main thought of this text, and we cannot lose it or we have to keep it in mind, is that as God the Father looks upon the Son Jesus Christ, God the Father sees you as his believer and disciple of Christ in the same respect here in this world. That's amazing. Because as I struggled this week and had to confess my weaknesses, it didn't influence, it didn't impact God the Father. He looked at me the same this week as he did last week when I was on the mountaintop. Doesn't, he, he's not changed or influenced by it. I am covered Amen. with the blood of Jesus Christ. Covered, secure in the blood and person of Jesus Christ. I'm the one who's up and down and influenced. God isn't. He knows my weaknesses. Psalm 103 says, He knows your frame. <laughs> my frame's breaking down. He knows all about it. And He still, He still loves you. He still is committed to you. He still will hear your prayers. He still embraces you as His own. Well, I want you to see today, as He is, two things, comes right from our text, as He is. 
the first part of this phrase begs us to ask, who is he and what is he as he is? We know the Apostle John is speaking of Jesus Christ. The first three epistles of, verses of this whole epistle, the Apostle John says, we handled him, we saw him, we heard him. This is Jesus, our Savior. They gave a handshake. They greeted him with a kiss on the cheek. They know him from the upper room where John leaned on him. They handled the same food at the feedings of the 5,000. Handled the same elements and food at the communion in the upper room. An important part of this phrase is found in one simple word. Is. Why is that important? Because it is present tense. You and I tend to look back at his life and say, he was, he was that, he did that. Past tense. John makes no mistake here saying, no, no, no. Jesus is, and so are you in this present world. Present tense. And instead of looking back, it's important for us to understand what John's saying to us. This present tense, what does it imply? We're told who Jesus is now. Let me share eight things with you as to who he is now. Number one, he is alive and in the world. Jesus Christ is omnipresent, eternal, and immutable. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 He put all things under his feet, gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Listen, God set Jesus Christ as the epitome, the icon, the person to worship. He didn't say Jesus Christ and this person. No. Anyone else who's bowed down for worship, who is spoken in the same terms of Jesus Christ, it robs from the work he did on the cross of Calvary. Jesus alone died for your sin. No one was there with him. He suffered the grief and bore your sorrows. And Jesus did it for you, and Jesus is alive today. There's no one else alive today. They've died their bodies in the grave. And Jesus alone is the Son of God, the living, crucified, risen again, Lord of our life. And He's over all things. He holds it all together. And He is in our life today and in this world. Secondly, He's the Savior of the world. From our text last week, 1 John 4, 14. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. The Father sent only, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. Number three, Jesus is keeping all of the universe together. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Here it is, verse 17. He is, Jesus is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Friend, Jesus takes his hands off this world, this present world, and I'm telling you, it's everywhere. It's destroyed. He's holding it all together. He is today. If he isn't today, then we have no hope. Present tense. Verse number, I'm sorry, number four. He is your intercessor. Romans 8, 34. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Why do we pray in Jesus' name? Right there, Romans 8, 34. He 
is interceding for us. We pray in Jesus' name. He hears you. It's present tense. You have a trial, you have a problem, you have a burden today. Pray today in Jesus' name. He's alive. He's for you today. Hebrews 4.16, let us come with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy, find grace to help in time of need. Number five, he is your conqueror. 1 John 4.4, 4, we gave you a sermon to, on just that verse weeks ago. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You are conqueror. You are victorious. In Jesus Christ alone. He will bring victory through your trials, through your circumstances. And then Romans 8, 37. <clears throat> no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thanks be to Him. You're on His side. You've received Him. He's your Savior. Friend, you are conqueror. He is your burden carrier. Today, throw it over to Him. He says, Matthew 11, Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Hey, listen, I walk and I live where you do. This week, it took me two days of repeating these verses, of praying, of listening to good music, to find my resource and my strength again. He never left me. But he says, cast it to me. You know what I do? Yeah, I give it to him. And then I take it right back. I'm a dummy. You know the problem? And if you're anything like me, and God help you if you are, our problems in this six by six area of matter right here. Right here. Because mine, my mind never shuts down. And it churns, and it moves, and it just keeps going like churning butter. I could be a millionaire if I hooked this up to something that was profitable. He says, throw it over to me. He's your burden carrier today. Today he's your shepherd. You know Psalm 23.1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know what our problem is? Here's our problem. Verse 1. The Lord is our shep my shepherd, I shall not want. We want more than just the Lord. If we are completely and fully satisfied in the Lord, I have no wants. Our problem is he's not completely, we're not yielded completely to allowing him to be our shepherd. The last one, he is my hope and coming king. Because Jesus ascended back to heaven and we know he's at the right hand of God the Father, we then, by the Holy Spirit that lives within the believer, are representatives. Or as the Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth, we are his ambassadors. So we have this hope until he comes that we are representative of him. He is our hope. And I have just a few verses. I'll read some of them to you. John 14, 3, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again take you to myself that where I am you may be also. Thank God. He's preparing and he says I'm coming again. 
Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, He is coming again. Acts 1, 10 and 11, this is almost humorous. While they were gazing into heaven as He went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? Well, I think you would have been too. Watching Him ascend from standing on the earth and He heads up, I think you'd be gawking too. And then they are told, this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Revelation 3, 11, Revelation 22, 7, Revelation 22, 20. I am coming soon. He is coming back. He is, present tense, our hope for us to live by. But I want you to see, secondly, so also are we in this world. As he is, so also are we. He left you as his ambassador, his representative. I want to walk you through the same eight things quickly. So are we. What are the implications for us as representatives, knowing whom he is, stating so also are we. Notice first that it's again present tense. We are. He doesn't say, so we were. So also are we. It's present tense. And no matter what you're facing, no matter your circumstance, no matter if you're in the valley or on the mountaintop, this same Jesus is for you now. Now. A past transaction of salvation means there is a plethora of present implications. You get that? A past transaction, when you placed your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation, indicates and brings a plethora of implications and truths for you. Here they are. He's alive and he's in this world, just like you are. Just like you are. You're not heading through this world on your own without a guide. He's there for you. He's present. He's eternal. He's immutable. We have a Savior 24-7 who never sleeps nor slumbers, slumbers, the Scripture says. Secondly, Jesus is a Savior. We have confidence and no fear, as stated in verse 18. We're covered under the blood of Christ that's been spilt for us. We are redeemed. Number three, because Jesus is keeping the universe all together, you can trust the sovereign Lord. All you need to know is He's working everything for your good. Romans 8, 28. No worries. No concerns. Every circumstance is for your good. Trust Him. Number four, He's our intercessor. He died for you. He personally knows what you're going through. He went through all of it Himself. He bore our sins, our griefs, our sorrows. Isaiah 53. Turn yours over to Him. Number five, He's our conqueror. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. He'll give you victory. Among all the cosmos, all the people groups of this world, you are victorious in him. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Be a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. Number six, because Jesus is our burden carrier, you don't have to walk around carrying a load of guilt. A load of worry, all your past sins, a load of anxiety, a load of fear. He's your burden carrier. Peter said, cast all your anxieties on him. Jesus says, I'll make it light. He's your shepherd. Don't know where to go, but don't know the next step. Put your confidence, your trust in him. He will lead you. Don't try and figure it on your own. 
Turn to Him. Are you in the Scriptures? Are you reading, seeking Him? Are you in desperate prayer on your face before Him? He will lead you. He's your shepherd. and You don't need any wants if you put it all, all your trust and confidence in Him. And lastly, because He's our hope and coming King, you can rejoice and look to the future with joy. No other religion, no belief has a living Savior. Jesus alone gave the promise of his return. He's preparing a place for those who have placed their trust and faith in him. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. Paul says to the church at Corinth, Therefore, if anyone is, is in Christ, <coughs> he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, because of all that done in salvation, therefore, we, his followers, his disciples, are ambassadors for Christ. God makes his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Friend, this is where it ends. We are representatives of Jesus Christ. We are his ambassadors. You know what an ambassador to a foreign country is and does? He represents our land. You are representative of another kingdom, the kingdom of God. You obey the orders of our Lord and Savior. And we are representative. So as he is, so also are we in this world. This great exchange takes place. And we have a different standing than all those who walk this earth. We are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. We are representative of Jesus Christ. And in your workplace, in your family, in your home, and in your neighborhood, and in your travels, you are the icon of Jesus who is the icon of God. What a great mission. It's awesome. And you can't do it on your own. I, show, I told you, we fail. We're not the best representatives always. But we have forgiveness and we can walk and be, by his strength, the representative he wants us to be. You can't allow discouragement to get you off this mission. You can't allow your pride. I can do it. I'll handle it. No, pride goes before a fall, God said. You can't allow possessions. Oh, I need this. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to get this. <laughs> Is he your shepherd? Or are you so focused on this possession? How about a position? You can't allow a position to get you off course, that you compromise who you are. You are the ambassador. You are the representative of Jesus Christ if you claim Jesus Christ as your Savior. As, say it with me together, as he is, so also are we in this world. What a responsibility. Yet what a joy. I'm his representative. Who would you rather be representing? Your neighbor? Some congressman? Some athletic team? 
some job, some of them things are good, can be good. But you serve and claim the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Let's represent him by his grace and be the ambassador to show and to share the love of Jesus Christ to everyone we come in contact with. How's all this apply to you? Have you received that gift of salvation? It's by grace through Jesus Christ alone through faith. Second, you should develop a deep sense of awe that God chose you to represent genuine Christianity. A lot of people talk Christ Christianity, talk religion. He chose you to represent Jesus Christ. That ought, you ought to walk on your tippy toes all week long if you keep that thought in your brain. That's our problem, right? We forget it. Number three, you're standing as a believer and follower of Jesus Christ from God's perspective is forgiven, I'm bold, I'm confident when judgment comes. And number four, take heart and be encouraged that as Jesus lived the victorious life here on earth, by his grace, you are victorious. May we represent Jesus Christ well this week. Let's pray. Lord, if there's someone here who does not know you as their Savior, is not a follower, disciple, has not received the free gift of salvation that Romans 3 talks about, may they quietly now or when they return home or tonight simply pray this prayer. God, I know I'm a sinner. I put my trust, my confidence in other things. Forgive me of my sin. I want you, Jesus, you alone, to be my Savior, my Lord. And I receive you and ask forgiveness of my sins. Lord, may someone do that, we pray, and we hear of it later today, tomorrow and we'll rejoice with them. Lord, for those of us who are disciples, forgive us where we fail you, cleanse us, and help us to live to represent well the King of King and Lord of Lords. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.